Well, now let's just talk about Tua Tungavailoa and Kyler Murray. Right? Like, how cool was that yesterday? But I want you to think about this for a second, okay? I, I met Tua. I am my my kids measured me. They're like, Dad, why were you met? Why were you listed at six foot one in Oklahoma State? You are not six foot. I was like, Well, with shoes on, like no chance. My kids measured me. They're like, You're not six feet tall. I was like, Okay, I'm five eleven three quarters. Just underneath it. Anyway, I've met Tua. He's my size, maybe a little smaller. I met Kyler. He's a lot, he's several inches smaller than me. Hey, I'm not a I'm a strong, pretty strong, broad dude. These guys, like Kyler is not a big dude at all. Not a big dude. Um, and Tua's not a big dude. But man, they they could both play. It was fun to watch. It was you're watching the future of the NFL. And Burroughs, much the same way. And look, Herbert's a, just a giant of an athlete. Family of stud athletes, 6'5", 6'6". I mean, he looks the part. He runs, he throws. But the the smaller, spry quarterback, like, that's kind of a new thing. Flutie was a gadget guy for a long time. Mike Vick was, Mike Vick had moments of greatness, but there was a, a little bit too off script, not accurate enough, and maybe a little bit too small. But for my lifetime, I, when I when I was growing up, I knew I would be somewhere in the five ten to six foot variety, right? And I was a quarterback, and I was really pretty good. But everybody's like, "You're too small to play quarterback," you know, play wide receiver, play. And of course, I picked basketball. But at least in basketball, there was in college there was there were landing spots for somebody like me. Tua yesterday in 87.6 QBR, 71% completion percentage, 35 yash, rush yards. I disagree with with Trent. I know Trent loves Tua, but he's like, oh, he's going to be like Aaron Rodgers. Like, he's not. Aaron Rodgers is more athletic than Tua is. 12 passes or 10 or, or ten or more yards, and he was 9 of 12 in this pass for one touchdown. There was improvement. He got better. Now, it's hard to tell because most people think that Vance Joseph's defense isn't very good. But does it matter? He went from no wow plays to, oh, this guy's not bad. Not as athletic as Kyle. Like, you watch Kyle, like, holy cow. Doesn't have the arm strength of Kyle. You're like, oh, I still don't understand how he generates that, that amount of power. You watch Kyle, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, wow. You watch too, you're like, okay, yeah, he's pretty good. He's a good player. He's a good player. But but Kyler feels, and he has a year of experience, but it's more in the tangibles. And I understand that Tua has incredible intangibles as a leader, as a person, as a thinker, and all that stuff. I, I get that. But you just look at the tangibles of two smaller quarterbacks, and Kyler is smaller. Kyler is lit. Like, he's one of those guys that you walk up and be like, that's it? Like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Wait, that's it? Yeah. Like, jo- Johnny Manziel was small and slight and kind of slumped shoulders, and he towers over Kyler. But man, that Kyler Murray is some. And then you watch two and you're like, well, he's a little bit bigger. He's left-handed. He's not as athletic. He's a little thicker. He seems to read the defense. Well, he delivered the football. Like he's good. I don't, he doesn't seem to have the pop of a Russell Wilson with his arm or the foot speed of a Russell Wilson that Kyler is a faster, slightly smaller as explosive, or maybe even more explosive thrower of a, of a Russell. Watching both of them, Kyler looks, again, I, I said it last year, I'm in for Kyler long-term, more so than Lamar, more so than Darnold, who I love, more so I just, I think he's the deal. Um, I'm not out on Tua, I'm more in on Tua, but Tua is definitely more singles and doubles than than home runs. It, it's a, it's a, he's got an advanced mind for a guy his age but I don't know. I still don't know if the tangibles match up with the intangibles, which he clearly has. I mean, th- there's there's nothing crazy physically impressive about Tom Brady. And let's also remember that Drew Brees, if you remember Drew Brees when he was with the Chargers, and this is, you have to go back. Drew Brees with the Chargers, he had issues with arm strength. And there, you know, it wasn't just, being small and couldn't see and had to learn how to manipulate the pocket and they had to change the blocking for him. It, it was also just 
old school pure arm strength that he appeared to not have. And then he he started really working on it. And there was a year, his last year with the Chargers, he kind of was he he changed some of his throwing and kind of loaded up and he wasn't as accurate. And then after the surgery, suddenly playing indoors, it seemed to work. So there's some breeze to him. There's some Brady to him in that you like a lot of things. You can't necessarily pinpoint one thing he does better than everybody else. But what I liked the best was there was mar- remarkable improvement from one week to the next. Right? There's still not the holy crap, call your friends, call your neighbors, look at this throw that he made, but he's pretty darn good. Look, we try and keep it consistent here. We, we do what's called congruent arguments, right? Um, and in this particular case, if I can say that Philip Rivers looks washed up, I can say that Tom Brady looks average to below average. Right? That's a congruent argument that age makes mortals of immortals. It just does. Um, Russell Wilson was awful yesterday. He was bad. Four turnovers led to 16 points for the Bills. Look, I'm not here going to, I'm not going to convince you their defense is good. I'm just not. They've tried to fix some things and help the pass rush with some of their additions at the trade deadline to kind of cover up the fact that they can't cover anybody. They had Jamal Adams back yesterday. It wasn't, it was like, well, Jamal Adams is back. Yeah, well, he's not great in coverage. That was the the knock on him, and the 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 Jets didn't see the value in a guy that's seen as a box safety. Great run stopping, great short tackler, not great in coverage, and that got exposed. And of course, there was also apparently an argument, a dust up between Pete Carroll and Jamal Adams. Stop me if you heard this before on the sideline. Right? What's the old Chris Carter saying? Money doesn't change you; it makes you more of who you are. But if we look at the the Seahawks and the two times that they were beaten, what do they have in common? Anybody? You know what I'll do? Dan Beyer is a huge Seahawks fan. Um, what is the what what is the what what is the correlation between their two losses? Uh they don't stop anyone? Yeah, but the on the other side of the ball, Dan. The other side what, of the ball. what? Oh, Russell Wilson? Yeah, how many turnovers? Well, he had Three interceptions against the Cardinals. Yes, how'd they do? They lost. Yeah, how'd he do yesterday? I didn't think he was as bad as you said, but I didn't think it was very good. Yeah, I mean, well, you're wrong, but that. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. No, no, I I mean, like, look, I, I get it. Like, I heard, and I heard Tony Dungy. I don't think it's unfair to say, well, you know, it's, it's impossible to win every game if you have to. Every time you have the ball, you have to score. Like, I get it. We all get it. Tony Romo sitting there in the booth in CBS. This is what he told me once when we were hanging out. He's like, look, man, people make a big deal about what I do and what I don't do. I got to be good and not turn it over, especially late. But you're not winning a Super Bowl without a top 10 defense. Doesn't happen. K- Kansas City could have gotten to the Super Bowl two years ago. Could have. Right? But the difference in Kansas City last year, this year, their offense wasn't as good. Right? They, they didn't have Mahomes some of the year because of the dislocated kneecap. They didn't have as good a running game. What was the difference? The defense is much better. Right? And so I, I, if you want to tell me, like, Seahawks, Seahawks defense is bad, sure. But Russell Wilson was not good. He was, he was not good. You know, forcing things that weren't there and taking some chances that maybe he felt like he needed to take. But when you turn the ball over that much, you, you have no chance of winning. None. We talk about quarterbacks who pile up garbage stats after falling behind. Russell Wilson, you look down, you're like, well, he had two touchdown passes, 390 yards. Dude, those were garbage stats. 24 points in the second half when they were they were they were down big at half. All right. They were down 24 10 at the half, and it felt like it was over, and it was over in the fourth quarter when he's still out there slinging it. 16 points after four turnovers. Not only does that, you know, did Buffalo do a good job of getting some points off of each of those turnovers, mostly field goals, but it also just where an already suspect defense completely wears it out. Completely wears it out. And, and this is a, you know, th- this is a team in Buffalo that wasn't like Buffalo had a running game. And Zach Moss was their leading rusher. Could you pick Zach Moss? Did anybody have Zach Moss on their fantasy team? Oh, look at, look at Ramos. He did score a touchdown, so you're good with that, right? 